Ladies and gents, welcome back to Punk Politics. I'm A. Thompson. This week was the Labour conference and it has been a belter. Dawn Butler reflected on the time she saw Boris Johnson maliciously masturbate Keir Starmer. It was building up. So it was like, what made him think that he had the right to do that? And Mick Lynch responded to accusations that HS2 only failed because Network Rail had accidentally spent £5 billion constructing the world's worst Thomas the Tank Engine cake. It it was set out wrongly in the first place. Um... It didn't connect to the HS1, which goes to France. That's what we needed. So there's been a lot of problems with it. But yeah, conference week for Labour. Time to set out your stool. Time to share your vision. Show how you're different to those flag-waving nationalist Tories. Like, we need to move away from the populist nationalism, guys. But, but, But keep the flags. People seem to like them. Of course, the prelude to the event has been as ridiculous as it ever was. The accusations that it's a Remainers party or Labour hate Britain. Or Labour can't be trusted with the public's money. Labour will just raise taxes. Everyone's like, oh, 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 Labour will, will they? Labour are going to spaff the public's money up the wall. Labour are going to make the tax burden unmanageable. I wonder what that'll be like. Like, will you be defecting? Because it sounds right up your street. Plus, against the backdrop of the terrorist attacks in Israel, we've had a litany of Are we supposed to just forget that Starmer supported Corbyn? I'm like, yeah, yeah, but whilst we're on the subject of remembering things, let's not fail to recollect that Starmer pretty much fired Corbyn. Because Jeremy Corbyn was deselected. He no longer has the whip. He's an independent. He can't run as a Labour MP. Now, I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but just, you know, if you're going to say that you can't support Labour based on the fact that this guy once worked with that one, you could make exactly the same case for Rishi Sunak having once worked with disgraced banned from Parliament Boris Johnson. There's no love lost between those two either. People are like, oh, well, he was was a bit cosy with Corbyn, wasn't he? All right, let, let me just break it down for you. Real simple. As anyone that I slept with in my 20s will attest, you can be superficially cosy with someone and still have absolutely nothing in common with them. You may even grow to dislike them. (laughs) Anyway, all eyes have been on Keir Starmer, Rachel Reeves and Angela Rayner, all of whom gave speeches to standing ovations in the auditoriums of Liverpool this week. And I guess everyone's really excited because this could be, reasonably, the last Labour conference before the next election. So yeah, everyone's super jazzed to hear what sort of policies, what ideas they're likely to go to market with, what they stand for and all that, which is something they've not perhaps been too hot at historically. I mean, I mean have, you, have you spoken to Keir Starmer? Have you sat in a room and gone, right, guys, what, what does the Labour Party stand for? An uncertainty about what exactly Labour under Keir Starmer stands for. He might have a plan. I don't know what it is. His MPs aren't altogether sure what he stands for. So, there's nothing. Don't know. Labour himself, not sure. Labour Party. How do you feel about that? I've had a lot worse thrown at me <laughs> in my life. I have to say, I did quite like that word cloud. Just dominated by things like, you know, don't know. Nothing. No idea. Which might sound bad, right? (laughs) But you have to factor in the Tories are dominated by selfishness, sociopathy and corruption. So I don't know, maybe, maybe a little don't know isn't too bad. If I don't know that you're a, you know, murderous, corrupt psychopath, take the win. It means... You're probably quite good at it. But yeah, anyway, that was Starmer's word cloud. Don't know. Nothing. No idea. Now, for those perhaps not so familiar with Kudsberg on Sunday's latest gimmick, Sunak was given his word cloud a couple of weeks ago and came away with rich people, himself, upper class and greed. And so, by contrast, Starmer's is, you know, vague and ambiguous. But I still think it's a positive, you know, because if you come away like you you don't represent or stand for anything in particular. At least you're not likely to legislate on something truly f***ing evil, are you? What comes to mind when I say the words Keir Starmer? Ooh, um, oh, um, I, I, I don't know. No idea. Uh, so Keir, c- can I ask you just quickly, wh- wh- what do you stand for? Uh, well, uh, uh, l- l- let me get back to you on that. It's like, it's like you're the guy in the back of the Vauxhall with all of your friends, and you don't want to tell all of your mates what kind of music you want them to play in the car. 
while you're all hot boxing it. And they're like, Oh, Jamie, we, we've had enough of a pendulum and chasing status and, and Breeze FM. It's your turn on the Spotify, son. What, what song do you want? Oh, um, uh, I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, you, you don't want to upset anyone. Uh, you, you don't want to get it wrong. Like, yeah, you're being a bit weedy and cowardly and you're scared of your mates. Oh, uh, I don't know. Anything's fine. But at least you're not getting it wrong. And that is the important thing. Oh, um, I, I don't know. No, no, you, you, you pick. Like, at least you didn't buckle and tell them, Oh, um, how about some Janet Jackson? You know, and have them all laugh at you and mock you mercilessly for years. Such is the thirst we Brits have <laughs> for relentlessly ripping the piss out of our closest friends. You know, it'd be every time you're in the club. Oi, Jamie, well, why don't you go to ask the DJ for a bit of Janet, yeah? Every time you go to a house party. Oi, Jamie, they, they've got a mic over here. Why, why don't you give us a bit of Rhythm Nation? Until finally, you snap. You're like, this is f*** off, Phil. I, I said it one time, because I heard her earlier that day. She, she's not my favourite singer, for f sake. I said it one time. All right, Jamie, we, we were just taking the piss a bit. Just f*** off, Phil. Why, why, why don't you all f*** off. No, it's just better to be a bit reserved sometimes. You're British, after all, you know? Stiff up a lip. Keep it all bottled up. So, so what are Labour for, Sakir? Well, um, I, I, I don't know. Just, just uh, nothing. Whatever. See? Good strategy. That's all I'm saying. Just nothing is better than the bad thing. Just shut the f*** up a bit sometimes. <laughs> Save you a lot of problems. And yeah, I don't know. That's, that's sort of been Keir Starmer's vibe until now. More on that in a moment. So at the conference, first his shadow deputy PM, Angela Rayner, gave a speech on Sunday which was packed the f*** out. She was like live at the Apollo. So that's shadow deputy prime minister. Meanwhile, her counterpart, Oliver Dowden, the actual deputy prime minister, didn't just fail to summon a crowd last week. CCHQ didn't even give him a slot. Just completely removed from the conservative conference speakers sort of thing. Just ostracized. Maybe he answered the car music question wrong or something. Oh, hey, what, what music do you want, Oliver? Um, do, do you have any um, Bee Gees? Get out. I, I beg your pardon? Yeah, you've, you've just lost the whip. Congrats. Oh, for fuck's sake. So Rayner's speech went down quite well. Also, Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves' speech was seen as a highlight. Three simple truths. The Tories are shits, Starmer's a don, an IPA is better than regular lager, it just is. And saw all your favourite journalists reaching for the same phrase like it was the last box of baby formula in co-op. Rachel Reeves pledges COVID fraud crackdown in barnstorming Labour conference speech. The barnstorming conference speech. In a barnstorming speech to the Labour... I mean, that was a barnstorm of a speech by any stretch of the imagination. But this is where it gets interesting from a sort of journo political perspective because we now know quite clearly what it is that labor stand for what does the labor party stand for stands for stands for because the speech built up a picture it sort of joined the dots so to speak reeves committed to removing vat from private schools closing the non-dom loophole she said she would raise stamp duty for overseas buyers to invest in house building for the domestic population. These are economic policies that are rooted in a desire to sort of protect the British people and fundamentally make things fairer. Would it work? Who knows? But that appears to be the centre of gravity that the components of this policy portfolio are all in orbit of. And yet the line... I don't know what Labour stands for. What does the Labour Party stand for? Will persist because it's just the line, you know? It's like Boris is doing his best or or he got Brexit done. Now, I know those two are Johnson specific, but they're great examples of lines getting out, getting into the discourse. And from there, they just get retailed out by cretins in the pub and the guy sat next to you waiting in the barbers and your taxi dude. And, like, it doesn't matter if it's true. It's just like people are just reciting a line like a school play. Well, Boris is doing his best, isn't he? Well, at the end of the day, he, he got Brexit done. It's like, it's like they're speaking in tongues from a seance being conducted at CCHQ. It's like, oh, I'm not really a big fan of uh, Carling, but uh, whatever. All right, here we go, guys. I mean, 
You don't know what Labour stand for anymore. Well, Bill, you, you see Labour are 25 points ahead now. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, Dave, I don't know what Labour stand for anymore. Well, I think they've outlined it in a few interviews here and there. But I don't know what Labour stand for anymore. Well, they've just come through it all at conference. But I don't know what Labour stand for anymore. <laughs> That's it. Keep saying it. Keep repeating it, you f moron. We've all been asking for months what Labour stand for, and they won't tell us. I couldn't even tell you what Labour stand for at the moment. I've honestly got no idea what Labour stand for now. It certainly isn't the working man. You know, it's kind of ridiculous. Like, you have these politicians up on a stage saying explicitly what they stand for, what their policies are, but still, guaranteed, down the pub, it's like, I don't know what they stand for. I suppose that is the power that the Conservative Party possess, isn't it? That they have the majority right-wing press in this country kind of in their pocket. Like, they could just construct or manufacture a narrative, a line, and it just becomes a sort of faux truth, doesn't it? And I suppose that relationship between the Conservative Party and the majority right-wing papers is also the reason that Labour can't do similar. Like, if Labour comms constructed a narrative or pushed a line that, I don't know, you know, the thing about Tories is they kill disabled people. Like, it just doesn't catch fire in the same way, does it? Because this protective firewall of right-wing tabloids just erupts and intercepts it, like chaos as hysterical Labour comms has meltdown. First scum, now Labour are accusing Tories of murder. While Labour confect outrage, Tories get on with the job. And I suppose that will stay the same unless, um, or until... We get a conference speech outlining plans to implement proper press regulation. Which I would like to see, but just steer clear of YouTube, all right? Shock. As Aid Thompson labels every single Tory minister a dirty livestock f***er, adding, consider this thoroughly in context. Anyway, the atmosphere at Labour Conf was reportedly jubilant, electric, a real buzz. The shadow chancellor has just garnered the support of the governor of the Bank of England. They've smashed the SNP in a by-election, which means we could be looking at a Blair-style victory here. They're 25 points ahead in the polls. Salvation polling has shown that among newspaper readers, only those reading the mail are more likely to vote Tory than Labour, and even then only by a small margin. Even a priority of readers of the Express and Telegraph say they favour Labour. Everything seems to be leaning towards a sort of metaphorical conservative massacre while Labour fly high. So it's weird to see four, I assume, divorced dads with mad paddy power energy walking a coffin around the site commemorating the death of Labour. Like Labour. La Labour are dying, are they? Really? Reminded me of last year when England took the knee and you had people saying, well, this ain't the England I knew. This is no, it's not my England. Oh, there's a parallel there, isn't there? A sort of death of England, death of Labour. Taking the knee? No, not my England. So you had these people sort of distancing themselves from their favourite team, only for England to go on to the semi-finals. Best result in decades, everyone cheering them on. Meanwhile, Dave from Dagenham was like, well, they lost me as a fan with all that woke stuff. While the team are just swimming in adulation and sponsorship deals, it's like, well, they lost me as a fan. Right, well, um, I'm sure they're devastated. Anyway, to bring this back to Labour and the death of Labour and the carrying the coffin around the conference site. What are they saying, really? What does this actually boil down to? They're saying that Labour, a party traditionally for the working class, for the workers, has abandoned its socialist roots. Meanwhile, others are saying, in so doing, it has found greater electoral, or polling, at least, success. So it's like, like, you might not like it. It might not be the version of the thing that you like, but it is more successful, inarguably. It's a sort of party political equivalent of your ex-girlfriend giving you aggro in the bar, like, what is with this leather jacket, Rob? This isn't you. And the hair. Oh, my God. You've really changed, Rob. Meanwhile, Rob's like, yeah, I have. And look at all this p I'm getting. Guys, that's it from me for now. My voice is f killing me. It's over to you. What do you make of modern Labour? Do you think they're on course for big things at the GE? Do you think they've fully abandoned the working class? Or maybe do you think they do want to get a bit more socialist? But perhaps they know that campaigning at this stage on some of those policies like, you know, nationalisation and free education, that it's just not worth the tabloid mauling they would get 
this far away from an election, you know? So like, maybe it's better to do it closer to the GE when it's in a costed manifesto, maybe? What did you make of Reeves, Rayner and Starmer's speeches? As always, let me know in the barnstorming comments below. Indeed, let me know what you stand for.